Hi Grade 12s, hope you're doing well. I would like to work uh, with you through question 11 for exercise 12 because I see in the solution book the answer doesn't add up. They missed some questions there. So let's look at the information given. And this is crucial, the information. If you can really grasp the information given, then the actual understanding of the question is um, easy. Okay. So let's look at this. So they gave us a graph. They told us it is the second derivative. Then they gave us this coordinate as B, which is 0 and 12. And then it intercepts at two, negative 2. And then they gave us the A coordinate, which was negative 4, negative 12. Okay, so the question reads as follows. The diagram alongside shows the graph of the second derivative of a function uh, which looks like this. ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus b. Okay, and then they tell us that a and b are the points where the first derivative is equal to zero. Now we know that the first derivative represents the turning point of the original graph. So we know that B and A corresponds with the turning point of the original graph. Now we're not going to use what I'm going to show you now in this calculation, but I want to show you this. Okay? Now how many unknowns do you have here? You will see there are four unknowns. Now, if information is given about the first derivative, we can calculate it uh, with this anyway, right? How many unknowns do we have there? One, two, three. So you can see you need less information to solve with this. The same with the second derivative. How many unknowns now? Only two. So keep this in mind for future calculations because this will really make your life very 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 easy uh, for instance it's not needed in this question but you can see we have enough information for this straight line to calculate a and b then we have enough information about the derivative being equal to zero to calculate we just need one of these points and we can calculate c and then that should, yeah, and then well, we won't be able to calculate B in this case. But can you see that it's completely possible to solve most of this? So if there was just one other piece of information given, we would have been able to solve for this whole equation there at the top. Um, but that's not the focus of this question. Let's start with this question. So the question reads, the x-intercepts of the graph of the first derivative. Now, let's quickly look at what the first derivative is. They already told us the first derivative is equal to 0 at A and at B. So that's already given in the question. So to ask now the x-intercepts, they're basically just asking where is the first derivative equal to 0. So we can immediately answer that and say it's where x is equal to negative 4 and x equals to 0. Remember, we only look at the x values. These y values do not um, correlate, right? Because the y value there is 0, and here it's negative 12, 0 and 12, so it really doesn't correlate. Now, what do we, now the next question is about the local maximum and local minimum. But let's talk about this now. Okay? This is the second derivative, this line, the straight line. And it refers to the concavity. So at that point is the point of inflection. The concavity is zero. To the left of it, this graph is negative. In other words, negatively concave. In other words, concave downwards. To the right, it's positively concave. In other words, concave upwards. Okay? So... What we can say already from the, the actual function fx is over here, if it's concave down, it's going to look like 
this, right? With its turning point right over there. And then it's going to be concave upwards like that. With the turning point right over there. And the point of inflection right over there. So that's what we can already see from this graph. Now let's look at the... So this is the graph of F, right? This straight line is the second derivative. The first derivative will look like this. The gradient... Okay, like I say, um, to at this point the the uh, turning point that's the turning point, so the derivative is equal to zero. Okay, but as you can understand now, to the left of this graph, right, it will be increasing. The gradient will be increasing, right? It will be positive. Then it will be negative all the way till the other turning point. And then from there on positive again. How do we know that? Well, this is concave downward, so that means it has to be that way. Okay. So this is the first derivative of the graph. Okay. And its turning point will be the point of inflection. So there we have all the information we need to actually calculate our unknown. So let's look at B. X for which Fx has a local maximum. Well, here we go. This turning point is the maximum and this one is the minimum. So that's just X equals negative 4. C. X where Fx has a local minimum. Well, it's the other one, right? X equals 0. D. X for which the graph of Fx is decreasing. That means this section over there. So it's in between negative 4 and 0. And E, X for which the graphs are increasing. That means it's to the left of negative 4 and to the right of 0. So it's X smaller than negative 4 or X bigger than 0. And F, the gradient of Fx when x is equal to negative 4. Now let's look at the graph again. The gradient where x is negative 4 is at the turning point, right? So the gradient will be 0. So the gradient, which is also known as the second of the first derivative, where it's equal to negative 4 is equal to 0. g, the x coordinate of the point of inflection of the graph of fx. Now we've already um, discussed this. The second derivative is 0, where it is the point of inflection, and all three of these line up. Okay, So that will just be x equals negative 2. And h, x for which the graph of fx is concave downwards. So we know from the point of inflection to the left, it would be concave downwards. So x smaller than negative 2. And then the last question i is x which the graph is concave upwards. Now it's to the right of the point of inflection. So it's just x bigger than negative 2. And this is the, the question. This is question 11 for exercise 12. I hope this will help you in understanding the work.